Hello there. Welcome to the, the learning of engineering tutorial video lectures. In this video lectures, we are trying to discuss about the mechanics of solids and the specific topic is the torsions of shafts. Right? So, as we know, the shaft is main purpose to transmit the power from one unit to the another unit. In that process, what happened? That shaft is going to be subjected to the, the torque. So then, in this case, because of this torque and the material will going to be start to rotate in a circular shape and then it is subjected to the torsional forces. Then the shear stresses are going to be generating in that material. We need to find out the magnitude of that. So here is the topic and the shear stresses produced in a circular shaft subjected to the a torsion. So then in this case, it is going to be subjected to the torsion and then we need to find out the shear stresses in that respect to uh, shaft. So in this case, for this one, to find out the magnitude of this shear stress, then what I am going to do, I am going to be taking the small element of the shaft and then I am going to be fixing to the one side and under the side, I am going to be allowed at free and where that free end is going to be subjected to the, the torsional forces here. So here the, the diagram I had provided, so graphical presentation here is the, this is going to be the fixed end and this is the free end. The fixed end is going to be the AA I am going to be calling and the free end is going to be the BB. And I have taken a one line on the outer surface of the shaft. That is the CD is going to be existed on the outer surface of the shaft. And the same that we can see in the end view. So there we can see this is going to be the shaft is going to be existed in the circular shaft. That means in the circular cross section. Then I have taken this is going to be O is the center of this part and the D is going to be when we are going to be watching from this side and the D point is going to be visible and the C is going to be hided the, uh, by the D. So then the diameter I have taken here is the, the D diameter. So we are made to subject it to the torsional force. It means that the torque is going to be acting that is equivalent opposite forces are going to be acting on the shaft to make to rotate it and it will transmit the power. And there we can see here certain terminologies I am going to be using after we are going to be. So once it is going to be there, I am going to be made to subject it to the clockwise torsional forces. So that means it is going to be subjected to these kind of the torsional forces that is going to be the torque is going to be acting. So then if it is going to be acting, then what happened? This material is going to be start to rotate like this. So then what happened, the point D is going to be shifting to the, the new position because the initially the outer surface is going to be subjected to the uh, torsional. That means the surface is going to be start to the distortion. That means deformation is going to be taking. So then in this case what happened, the same diagram when the D is going to be reached to the another position. So that I am going to be showing here is the D, D dash. So can you see that is the material is going to be. So the same thing I am going to be showing here is the D dash and I am going to be joining the point over here. So can you see the initially that is the CD is the without applying the load but after applying the load so then what will happen so it is going to be subjected to this kind of the torques. So automatically the metal will going to be start to deform. So that angle I am going to be say the gamma. The gamma is going to be the angle is called distortion angle per unit length we are going to be considering. And similarly, there is going to be a point is existed from OD is going to be we know that is the radius of the shaft. And similarly, OD dash also going to be the radius of the shaft. But angle of twist I am going to be considering here that is the theta. Right? So there we can see some terminologies and R is the radius of the shaft, L is going to be the length of the shaft and D is going to be the diameter of the shaft and the T is going to be the applied torque and tau is going to be the shear stress. This magnitude we need to be calculate and C is going to be modulus of rigidity and units also the same Newton per mm square we are going to be taking and gamma is nothing but angle of the distortion at the outer surface on the shaft and the theta is going to be angle of twist that is going to be from the inner circle we are going to be considering. So now we are going to be considering the shear strain in this material. What is the shear strain formula? We know the shear strain is equal to what is the shear strain that is going to be the distortion of the material per unit length we are going to be considering. So that is going to be distortion of shaft per unit length. 
so we are going to be considering so by using this one we are going to be calculating the the shear strain and shear stress and the torque what is the magnitude also we can calculate it now we need to find out the shear strain so the shear strain we are going to be calculating from the the distortion of the shaft per unit length we are going to be considering in this case through the length we can consider one triangle and through the radius we can consider the another triangle there we can see the triangle if i am going to be taking here the d c and d dash suppose that's going to be d c and the d dash in this triangle i'm going to be find out here what is the gamma so in this case what i'm going to be taking the total length cd we know that is the l and the d d dash we don't know that we are going to be taking here that's going to be tan gamma is equal to the formula opposite side by adjacent it's opposite is going to be your d d dash by l we are going to be considering all right so tan gamma is going to be the very small component as we know tan theta or uh, tan uh, gamma are the sine gamma we are going to be considering the very small component so that i am going to be simplifying this one the gamma is equal to d dash by l as you know in this equation we we need to find out what is the d dash so once if you are going to be finding the d dash i'm going to be substituting in this equation so for to find out the d dash i want to define that in terms of the radius as well as the angular twist so that i'm going to be considering one more triangle over here that's going to be d o and d dash i'm going to be considering right so from this one this is the theta is there opposite side is going to be your d d dash and your adjacent side is going to be the r so that i'm going to be taking here that's going to be sin theta right the sin theta or we can consider the tan theta also the sin theta is equal to d d dash divided by r i am going to be considering because the sin theta is going to be the very small component so that i am going to be rewriting this one the d d dash is equal to r theta now this magnitude i am going to be substituting in this equation so that i can define this gamma is nothing but the distortion per unit length we are going to be considering that is indicating your shear strain so that's gamma is equal to d d dash means how much here that's going to be r theta divided by l i am going to be getting so once if i am going to be getting the shear strain this is also called shear strain right so can you see r theta is nothing but this is going to be the radius right and this is going to be the theta and this product of this radius as well as the theta we will get your d dash that is going to be your distortion per unit length we are going to be considering that is going to be gamma is equal to r theta l so now we will try to find out the the shear modulus as you know the shear modulus indicated letter is the c how we are going to be writing the shear modulus is nothing but the shear stress by shear strain the shear stress is going to be tau by gamma i am going to be considering right now the tau is nothing but the shear stress is going to be existed at the outer surface of the shaft so then gamma is nothing but your r theta by l that i am going to be substituting that's going to be tau divided by r theta by l i am going to be taking here right so once we are going to be getting this one so we are going to be simplify that part now i am simplifying this equation so from this one i am going to be taking this terminology so what i am going to be taking the c r theta by l is equal to tau okay i am simplifying further this one the c theta by l is equal to tau by r so this is going to be the shear stress this is called your governing equation when the member is going to be subject to the torsional uh, torsional loads so then the c theta by l is equal to tau by r as we know the r is going to be the radius of the shaft this r is going to be varying from 0 to capital r right so that means it is going to be at the center it is going to be the zero radius is existed once we are starting moving to the outside that that is going to be your capital r is going to be coming so then what i am going to do if i want to find out the shear stress on this elemental strip suppose if i am going to be considering this is going to be the elemental strip which is located at a distance of small r right that is located at a distance of small r 
So then how could you calculate it? So that magnitude with this equation I am going to be writing that the C theta by L is equal to tau by R. This R is going to be your outer surface. But if the shear stress existed at the middle of that 0 to capital R that I am going to be taking small q by small r I am going to be considering. So there we can see the q is nothing but your the shear stress of the elemental strip right and the small r is going to be that radius from the center. You know this r is going to be varying from 0 to capital R. So if you are going to be substituting 0 and r then we will get this equation. So from this mathematical analysis we are going to be trying here. So now we can see. So in this case what will happen the tau is going to be directly proportional to the capital R. Right? This is going to be your circular shaft and this is going to be the center. So then what will happen when I am going to be moving from the center to the outer radius. So then what will happen here the shear stress is going to be increases. So that means this R1, R2, R3 and R4. So then what will happen in this case the R is going to be varying from 0 to capital R. So that means when the R is going to be increases and your shear stress also going to be increases. It means so the shear stresses are going to be existed on the surface maybe we can expect it like this. So from this one like this and from this side we are going to be getting like this. Now, the curve is going to be a coming that means the shear stress is going to be distributed in a shaft is going to be in this manner. That means at the center it is going to be have a zero shear stresses and at the outer surface we are going to be have the, the maximum shear stresses. So this is the way we are going to be finding the relationship between the applied torque and the shear stresses as well as the shear strengths. And we are considering here is going to be the, your, the modulus of rigidity. So I hope you are able to understand this mathematical model right. So from this mathematical model we are trying to determine some of the parameters which are going to be subjected by the shaft. So thank you still if you feel any difficulty please put in the comment section so that I can reach you. Thank you.